welcome to Wing Design Tutorial 3, Creating a Wing Assembly from Parts. And in this tutorial what we're going to do is create a new assembly and exert existing parts we made in Tutorial 2. And we're going to use patterning to quickly create multiple ribs from a single rib part we've put in. Uh, we're going to use mates to set up a hinge control surface. And then lastly we're going to create a new part for the root block of the uh, test rig and insert that into our assembly. Okay, so we're in SolidWorks and what we're going to do is create a new assembly file. So we go up to the file menu here and new and assembly is the yellow block with the blue one in the corner. We click on that. And depending on what you've got open, if SolidWorks finds some parts already in the directory where you are, um, it will start there. In my case, it hasn't found any, so it's gone straight to the um, directory I was last working in and shown me some parts that I can insert. And what we're going to do is start with the rib component. So we click OK, and now with my mouse I can kind of move it around anywhere. But actually to make things work for us really easily, what we want to do is not click in the workspaces, but actually just do tick up here. And the reason we do that is, is that drops this part in the world with the origin of this part aligned with the origin of the world. So if we find the origin here, that's the origin of the world. And if we go to the origin of this part, they're both in the same place. So we've sliced a bit off the leading edge there, haven't we? But that's the origin of the aerofoil. And so what that means now is when we drop in parts, as long as they all reference the same sketch, they should be all roughly in the right place to start off with. Okay, so that's our um, rib section. Uh, we haven't had a chance to save this yet, but we're gonna do this now because that's the earliest time we can. So we're gonna do file save. And we're going to do it as, call it wing assembly. So sort of works gives it a dot as a um, extension, but I always call my assembly files assembly, and then I really know the difference between a, uh, a part and assembly. Okay, wing, wing assembly. So in terms of adding parts, there's different ways you can do it. Uh, I'm just going to click on insert components and it's clicked up with this menu item again, or this window where we can do it. And let's add in the spar. Once again, it's all over the place, but if I just click tick, it appears there. And you can immediately see why we tried to drop it in the same place, because it means that that is put in exactly lined up with everything else. We didn't have to do any mates or anything, it's exactly lined up. Okay, let's get those other components in. So uh, let's put the rear spar in and then tick. Put the leading edge on. There we go. And let's put in the trailing edge control. On that one, it's going to drop it there. We need another one in there. So let's, well, we could try duplicating that one. I'm just going to insert another one. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to drop this somewhere randomly so it doesn't sit on top of the other one. So there we go. So if you just drop it in, it goes in a place like that. Okay, so that's looking, looking good. Um, what should we do first? Let's get these ribs spaced out. So we put one rib in there. If we wanted to do a lot of work, we could insert lots of ribs and then do some dimensions and space them out. And they could, add, and you know, worst case, you make a new part for each rib. But as usual, because we're smart and lazy, what we're going to do is we're going to use a SolidWorks pattern to reproduce those ribs as they go along. So up here, we've got linear component pattern. So the first thing it's asking for is direction. And you can use any straight edge, but I'm just going to use the edge of the spar. Um, it's asking for um, how many we want and the spacing. So let's just try two and start off with. And it's 50, but we haven't actually told it which component we're gonna pattern yet. So let's click on that one, so let's click on that. Okay, that's the start. So it's produced another rib, but it's in the wrong direction. So we need to make it go the other way. So if you look up on here, um, there's a direction here. This little, this little button here reverses the direction. So there we get to there. And how many ribs should we have? Uh, this is up to you, 
but um, there needs to be enough ribs that basically the ribs are there to hold the wing shape and give something for the covering to attach to. So it's up to you how many ribs you put in. Obviously it increases the weight of the wing, uh, but you need enough, enough ribs in there to, to control the shape. And let's space these out. I was looking a bit too far apart actually, so I'm gonna put, put another rib in. Let's have a check on that. Oh, let's go for eight. And SolidWorks unfortunately moves in chunks of 10. You can change this in your, um, um, so for, let's try 108 spacing. Uh, if you use a, you can work this out exactly. Uh, you've got to remember to subtract. Okay, so it's somewhere between that. Let's just try 6.5. That'll do. And we check that. And there we go, we've got our ribs in. So look how quick that was. We went from a few parts and in almost no time at all, uh, we've got a complete wing. And remember that we made the length of the spars, um, the right length for the, is according to the requirements, but we made the length of this uh, main spar, the full length of the foam board. And this bit is important because this is what you're gonna use to be gripping it when you're applying loads to it. Okay, let's get this um, these ailerons sorted. So at the moment, this thing is fixed, so I can't move it. Um, we want to we want to be able to move it uh, within this model. So let's do right click on that and do float. So now it's actually going to move around. And what we need to do is mate it to that trailing edge. So a number of different ways of doing it. If you click that edge and then go up to paperclip thinks about it for a bit and then if you click the other edge you want to join and it automatically goes to a coincident uh, mate which is what we want and there we go that's attached there um, we want it lined up with the edge of the wing so what I'm going to do is do a kind of a another coincident mate between those two bits and SolidWorks is quite smart at this stage and therefore there we go we've got it hinged along there but on that position and if we just tick off those mates, so this now control surface will now move. You can put pass it through itself, uh, but that is a control surface. Need to do the same thing for this one. Uh, it doesn't matter what order you're doing, I'll do it a different order this time. So make that with that line, tick that, make that surface with the end of that, tick. Okay, we've got ourselves a wing. So I'm sure you'll agree that was pretty quick, uh, but bear in mind all the work we did was in the design of this um, master sketch, which then derived all the parts. But to test if our design process is good, maybe somebody's come along and said, actually, I think we need a, what should we change? Let's just say these holes are too big. Someone says, okay, these are too big. We've not got enough material there. We need to change the size of that hole. You're thinking, oh no, have we got to rebuild the whole wing again? And the answer is not because was we're smart, we've done a, a master sketch. So what we're gonna do now is I'll show you how to change, just changing the master sketch, how that will flow through the whole of the wing. So what we're gonna do is window, I haven't got that one open. So let's, we need to open our master sketch. So click open, wing geometry master sketch. So I've labeled it nicely so I can find it. So maybe somebody said, okay, this hole's too big. Um, let's make it smaller. So let's do edit this sketch. Okay, it's already in edit mode. That's fine. Um, let's make that a bit smaller. But hang on a second. Let's do something more radical. Maybe the, the spar has changed shape, and this will happen actually when you're doing your design. So let's say we can, we've made it 40 mil that way, and maybe it's gone to 60 mil that way. So still just about fits in. Okay, so we changed the shape of our spar. We've made some minor changes to the, uh, the hole spacing. Uh, let's tick through that. And now if we go back to the wing assembly, it'll say models can tell me that something have changed. Would you like to rebuild it? And the answer is yes, we do. And look at that. 
and that magic so that spar has been changed shape and those changes have flown th flowed through the whole of the design so all the ribs have changed spars changed and it all fits together so that's the magic of good SolidWorks design is where you can make sort of detailed design changes and it flows all the way through your model uh, to allow you to change things um, you can break it if you move things too fast or something crosses over something else it can't deal with that but it does show you how you can change things quite easily okay the other thing I need to show you here is that we're going to need another part uh, for the next tutorial we're going to need something to grip this we need a vise to grip it in so what I'm going to show you now is if you now have to make another part that's perhaps not related to your addition your original master sketch you want to make another part let's just go through the process of building that and putting this in the assembly so I'm going to go to new part and we're just going to make a kind of a, a vice simple vice jaws um, and if you remember before that we used the the front plane so the XY plane so it's always worth drawing things the right way around uh, to how you want to use it so let's do front plane and let's do a sketch on that and we want something that's going to grip um, grip our uh, box beam so I'm going to draw a center line on here and make it come out straight so you see the little yellow line that says it's straight double click in space um, and we've got a some sort of vice jaws we're going to make like this and the half the height of the beam was 30 because we just changed it to 60 so let's put that as 30 and oops let's make this uh, 30 wide so it's a little bit of a small vice but that's fine and let's get it lined up with the middle so I'm going to click that shift click the origin to on top of each other and so bear in mind our spar is going to sit in the middle and we need some sort of jaws like this um, and then let's reflect it to the other side so I'm going to select all of that to get us started then I'm going to do mirror entities it's got those lines mirror about that and tick so we've now got a, a symmetrical vice jaw so if we changed any of these um, made it thicker that way the other one changes so that's kind of smart design let's extrude that out and we know the bit sticking out the back is around 100 millimeters long so let's just make them 100 millimeters but obviously the great thing about CAD is that you start with the dimension and then you can change it again afterwards if you want to and material let's make this one out of steel so it's a vice so can I find some steel on here uh, cast iron plain carbon steel that will do and we set it to steel and let's save that as call it vice go back to our wing assembly and do insert component so it's found it here because I was working on it so if we just kind of bring it into the world and let's get this attached so let's do that bottom one first select it paper clip it on check on that so now it's lined up with that and let's line it up with front face of that but that's right on top so what I'm going to do here now is do a distance uh, constraint and flip dimension so I'm going to make it so that it is five millimeters no, I'm not five millimeters away from the rib take that okay so this thing genuinely in a vice your vice won't be exactly the same size as your spar but it'll be something like that okay and now we're done so we've got flaps we've got a wing with all our parts in and we've got some vice jaws holding our spa so really quick and we've also seen the value of using a master sketch so i changed the dimensions of the spa and it flowed through the whole design really quickly 
um, so that we could see the effect of our changes with very little effort at all. Great, that's the end of this quick tutorial. In the next tutorial, what we're going to be doing is doing some finite element analysis on this. So we're going to use the simulation tools within SOLIDWORKS to evaluate the stress within this beam.